Thank you for joining us at Breath of God Church for today's message. Our desire is to impact the lives of all generations with the tools needed to have success to impact the world. Please take a moment and follow us on our podcast channel, Facebook at Breath of God Church and or Instagram at BOGNC. Thanks again for joining us and we pray that you will enjoy this message from Pastor Potts. We're in a series called The Inner Man. And we're still on the series. I'm not going to move until the Holy Spirit tells me to move. But we're on a series called The Inner Man. And what we are looking at with the inner man is looking at inside of us, inside of me. All right. So many times in the church world, the Christian world today, uh, I grew up, I grew up in church, guys. I grew up, I know sometimes I don't look it and act like it, but I grew up in church. All right. And one of the things that got me out of the church, because when I hit 17, 18, I left the church for years. And one thing that got me out of the church was, is, was that people were always judging the, 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 uh, uh, my outer person instead of my inner person. People were always looking at that instead of looking in here, okay? And what, what we also find is that people always judge the outward. So if you look like you got it all together, they will think you got it all together. But inside, you could be just as nasty, uh, just as nasty. And that's why in Samuel, we heard what, Paul, uh, what Jesus said in Samuel. Uh, people look at the outer, but I look at the inner. Jesus said, you could cover it all up all day long, but I'm going to go inside your heart. And I'm going to look and see what's right here. That's why he still called David a man after my own heart. Why? Because on the outside of David, he was messed up. But on the inside of David, David still had that heart for praise and worship. He still had that heart for God. So when David would get in trouble, he wouldn't go somewhere and do this or do that, say, oh, whatever. He would say, God, against thee only have I sinned. He will find him an altar, and he will kneel at the altar and say, God, forgive me. Guys, sometimes it takes a while for you to get yourself cleaned up, but what, what, but what is in your heart? Even though I was in the streets acting crazy, acting foolish and all this stuff, but inside my heart, I really had a love for God. I love church. Yeah, I, I really do. I love church. I love pastors, man. I love leaders. You know, I, I'm always, when we go in places and all that stuff, you know, my kids get tired of me sometimes because I'm always looking at Bill and said, that'd be a great church. You know, but even though my outside looked crazy, but on my inside of my heart, the church was in my spirit. You know, even though I went to school, got three degrees and all this mess, the best thing that I ever wanted to do was to do what I'm doing. So when the t even when times get hard, if you can walk away from something when times get hard, it was never in your heart. Okay. I know it's quiet in here. You know, when times get hard, the reason why, she's not here today, but the reason why me and my wife are still together after four kids, and I think we finna celebrate 18 years. I think it is. I'm glad she's not here today. It's one of them. 18 years. Because it was in our hearts. The first five years of our marriage was pure H-E-L-L. Okay, y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Am I in the right church today? Okay, it was, it was, but we stuck it out. Why? Because it was right here. It wasn't on just on paper. It was here, man. You know? <laughs> the reason why I still feed them big kids of mine, even when they get on my nerves, okay, y'all look at me like I'm, I'm in the wrong church this morning. Yeah, hey, I know everybody, a lot of people are traveling, but hey, it, I mean, it's in my spirit. I, I, I bring some birds in here and preach the birds. Okay. Right. You know, but the reason why, because the kids are in my heart. The reason why you can get mad at your kids, okay, it's only me. Okay, uh, 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 and, and whew, let me move on. Hmm. You know, because it's in my heart. The reason why Jesus can still love you when you make bad mistakes. When you do stuff, you know you don't got no business doing. You know it's a sin, but you're doing it anyway. Oh, Jesus. Why? Because you are in his. You are in his heart. So that's what we're talking about, the enemy. What does your heart say? I don't care what comes out of your mouth. What does your heart say? You can say, I love you all day long. Uh -huh. But if, you, if, if, if I need $10 and all you got is 15 if you really love me, you'll give me the 10. Y'all better stop playing with me. You know? You know? What's inside your heart? And we started our foundational scripture with Ephesians 3, 
14 through 9, Ephesians 3, 14 through 9. I'm not going to read that one. Go to Psalms 51. That, I, I don't read that a couple of Sundays in a row. Ephesians 3, 14 through 9, 19. That's our foundation scripture. scripture. But I want to start with this. Uh, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal, your worship may say, a right spirit within me. Create in me, O God. That's what it says, right? A clean, a what kind of heart? A clean heart. That lets me know that everybody's heart is filthy. Everybody's heart is nasty, from the preacher on the, on the stage to the person back there. Everybody got some stuff in their heart that they need to clear up, that they need to get out. Paul said it like this, we sin daily. We got something in our heart, man, that if we're not careful, if we're not praying for, it will overtake us. Unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, come on now, temper, you know, whatever's in our heart, judgment, gossip, whatever's in our heart, if we don't clean it out, it will overtake you. You know, in other words, if you don't clear out your heart, your heart will attack you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. If you don't clean out this right here, it will eventually overtake you. Quick story, quick story. All right. Uh, about a month ago, my kids are going to be laughing here in a minute. About a month ago, uh, I opened up the front door of the house, and there was two birds sitting on the little whatever we call it, on the porch. You know? Oh, look at the birds. Cute little birds, you know, cute little birds, whatever, you know? And so, you know, and then the next day I looked at them, and they started bringing stuff to the house. You know, got like, uh, you know, kind of like an over porch, and they got some little a little lift right here. I'm not a carpenter. Some of y'all be like, what are you talking about? Little, it's a porch with a little lift. Anyway, uh, they was up there, and they was bringing stuff. And I'm looking. And, and so my wife said, oh, they're building a nest. I was like, oh, okay. Huh, ah, hmm, okay. Okay, little bird building a nest. All right, whatever. You know? But something told me, you might want to tear that nest down and tell them to go on somewhere else. I'll do it tomorrow. The nest got bigger. I'll do it tomorrow. The nest got bigger. I would do it tomorrow. Well, then we had to jump in the car. You know, we had the, I had the ministry thing in, in Terrytown, New York. So I'm gone for a couple of days. Lord and behold, I come back. The nest is built, and they got four babies sitting up in that nest. Now, this was the problem. The problem was, now, I can't get to my porch. Because I open up the porch to go out, and you would think it's F-16 bombers. These little birds are flying up, coming back down. I'm talking about straight at you, and you can, they pass your ear. You can hear them, like, chipping your ear. And so you got me. I'm running to the car. I'm fighting at birds. You know, my neighbors are like, what's wrong with him? But these, these birds are mean. These birds are mean. These, oh, these birds are mean. My son right there, these birds are mean. He go outside the next day to go to the, uh, to get in the car to go to school. He run back in the house and he diving in the house. The bird hit me, you know, and so now I'm outside. It's 90-something degrees. I got an umbrella walking to the car. I'm walking to the car with the umbrella because these, bird, these birds are ferocious. I, I'm the guy that cut my grass. I said, man, how you get rid of them birds? He said, I ain't fooling with them birds. He said, them birds are mean, man. He said, you, you just going to have to, you know, wait till they leave, tear down the nest. So, lo and behold, we, so now in order to get to our cars, we got to go through the drive, we got to go through the garage. Can't even use the porch. Can't even use it. Won't even go out there. We, we peek through the window. They, they done tore up the porch. All right? Then, you know, you get know what I'm saying? Because I should have dealt with the nest back then, but I didn't. So now what was supposed to be an innocent has turned to attacking me. Not only has it attacked me, it has taken over something that I pay for every month. So I can't even sit on my porch, look at people, drink some lemonade, and look at the... I can't even do that no more. Because what started kind of like, eh, now it's blown, it's blown up. Now, they don't want to leave. The babies don't grow up. Baby, they flying all over the place. But guess what they come back to? Okay, I'll stop playing. Man. If you don't deal with it, it will eventually overtake you. If you don't deal with the unforgiveness, it will eventually overtake you. If you don't deal with the gossip or the judgment or the, 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 the attitude 
or, or what's in your heart, you know, the bitterness coming out. If you don't deal with it, it will eventually overtake you. The Bible says that your body is the temple of the what? The, come on with me. Your body is the temple of the what? The Lord. If you don't deal with it, it will eventually overtake you. Here's what I said. We got to deal with our hearts. And so now, I have to work double duty to get rid of these birds. Because they have overtaken. But thanks be to God. So I want to talk to you today about five ingredients for change. Five ingredients for change, and then we're going to go home. Five ingredients for change. Number one is desire. You got to have a desire to change. You have to want it. You have to want to change. No one can want it for you. You have to want to change. You have to be able, you got to look and say, hey, I don't like how I am. I don't like my situation. I don't like what I'm going through. I don't like what I'm dealing with. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, you have to come to, as we call it, a come to Jesus moment. As, we have to go, as long as uh, 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 my wife and my mom and all them was praying for me to change and I didn't want to change it, they, they, wasn't nothing going to happen. Nothing happened until I personally came to a Jesus moment and said, God, I want to change. I don't like how I am. I don't like what I'm dealing with. I don't like what's coming out of my mouth. I don't like how I treat my wife or treat my kids. I want to change. You have to have a desire. Come on with me, church, today. You got to have a desire to change. You got to have that thing right here that says, hey, hey, God, I need to clear out this. Come on now. This house inside of me. There comes a time where, where all my ladies at, all my ladies at, you don't got to raise your hand. There comes a time when you go through that closet and say, you know what? I just got too many clothes. I got too many shoes. It's time to do what? Clean out. That's where we are right now. God, I got too much stuff in here that I don't like. It's time for me to clean it out. Go with me to Psalms 145, 19. Psalms 145. Oh, yeah. Psalms 24, right in 19. 19. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries for help and rescue them. Do you want to change? Do you have that desire? The Bible says he will hear you and he will help you change. Now, it won't happen overnight. There is a process to it. But Jesus said, I will hear you and I will help you to change, man. If you, if you got something in your heart that you need to get out, God said, I'll help you do it. You can't do it on your own. How many of us got kids in the house? If it, if it, if it weren't for Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And all of us, we say this, some of us say it every day, Jesus help me. And it's summertime too, Jesus help me. Because if you, Jesus don't help you, you might end up. <laughs> And it's the same thing in the spiritual, man. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me before I say something that I don't got no business saying. Help me before I do something that I don't got no business doing. Jesus, help me. You got to have the desire to change, man. You got to have the desire to want to do it, you know? Uh, 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 when we was, me and Deacon Willis out at ECU yesterday, man, you had a whole bunch of kids everywhere. You know, you had this and you had that. And you, you could look, and, and he would tell you, you could look at everybody out there, but me and him, we could look at people and know that they really want to do that. They really want to play football. This is what they really want. They got the desire. They want, and so you will see them go extra hard on this or extra hard on that. You know, you got to have a desire to change, guys. And God, it ain't going to just happen. You're going to have to work on some stuff. Number two, number two, is you got to make a decision. As Joshua would say it, choose you this day. Who you going to serve? All right? You got to have the, you got to make a decision. You can't just sit on the side. You got to make a decision to get this stuff out of your heart. You got to make a decision to want to change. Matthew 6 and 24. Matthew 6 and 24. You have to make a decision. No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. The one version said mammoth, the same thing. You know, you got to make a choice. 
Joshua, choose you this day who you going to serve. That's, that's the other part. Joshua's in the Old Testament, New Testament. Choose you this day who you are going to raise your hands to because you can't do both. Oh, y'all better stop playing with me. You can't do both. You can't, come on now, you can't be married to the wife and married to the job. Come, come with me. You can't be married to the job and try to be married to, it ain't going to work. You're going to have to make a choice. Come on now, you can't be in God and still try to be over here. You've got to make a choice if you want to have a clean heart or not. You've got to make a choice if you want to get that unforgiveness, that bitterness, that just, all that stuff. You've got to make a choice if you want to get that all out of your heart. I'm preaching good today, I know. It, uh, all out of your heart. You have to make a choice. You can't blame the pastor, can't blame the church, can't blame your spouse. Come on now, can't blame the kids. Why? you got to make that choice. you got to make that choice. Choose you this day. You got to make, you can't, you, that's what he said, you can't do both. You can't straddle the fence. The Bible says he'll spit you out if you look warm. God said, I don't even want to deal with you if you ain't hot. How many of y'all, y'all like hot food? Okay, y'all live okay. How many, how, do y'all like food that's in mediocre? Like one side is hot and the other side cold? What do you do? You either throw it away or put it in the microwave. Right? Same thing with God. God said, you got to make a choice. I can't deal with you in the middle. But if you're hot, I can deal with you. Even if you're cold, I can deal with you. But when you are stuck between two opinions and you don't know who you want to serve, God said, I can't do that. Why? Because I, 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 I'm not a confusing God. I'm not the author of confusion. I don't operate in that stuff. You have to make a choice. If you want to go sin, I can deal with that too. If you want to be saved, I can deal with that. But in the middle, where are my married folk at in the house? Come on, come on. You can't help nobody if they don't know what they want to do. Oh, y'all better stop playing with me. Same thing with Jesus. Jesus said, which one you want to go? What, where? What do you want to do with your heart? How do you want your heart to be? Don't just say, oh, God, I want to be like you. You know what that means? That means you're going to have to forgive some people who, that you really don't want to forgive. Yeah. But, you know, that means you're going to have to bless some enemies that you really don't want to bless. Okay, you better stop playing with me. That means you're going to have to walk away from some stuff that you really don't want to walk away from. Okay, y'all look at me like I'm crazy. You, you, you know, they, they, they choose you to stay. You got to make a decision. Number three, number three, you got to have determination. You got to have determination. In other words, you got to be determined in your spirit to keep walking, as my mama would say, the straight and narrow. You got to make, you got to have the determination to keep going on in spite of what comes up, man. You know, all of us in here going to go through some dark days. You're going to go through some hard times. You're going to go through some times that make you like, I don't know if I really want to do this. But if you got some determination in you, it will keep you moving, come on now, in spite what? Of. Again, I'm a football coach. You know, I'm a football coach, and we start practice tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Y'all pray for me. We start practice tomorrow at 5 o'clock. One of my jobs for the next couple of weeks is to weed out the people who don't have that determination. Because, because, you, because when, the, when the game is on the line and it's in the fourth quarter and you're dead tired, you still got to have something in you that say, I'm going to leave it all on this field. Determination. Determine a question. When things arise in your life, do you just lay down or do you, or you look at them things and say, you know what, I'm determined to keep living the life Jesus has for me. I'm determined not to let my good be evil spoken of. I, hey, okay. I'm determined to keep fighting. I'm determined to keep moving. I'm determined. You've got to have determination. Galatians 6 and 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. The determination to keep moving in spite of what it looks like. 
to keep going in spite of what it looks like. You seem like your prayers ain't being answered. Or you, uh, you keep praying. It seems like God ain't come through yet, but to keep praying. Come on now. It seems like things getting worse instead of better, but I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep fasting. I'm going to keep believing. The determination. You know, uh, uh, a lot of you who've been with me for a while, you know I say, uh, I've been saying this for a long time. Sometimes your faithfulness will do for you what your faith cannot. I am where I am today, not because of my faith. Okay, hey, I'm just being real. I, I, when I say faith, I'm not talking about like my faith in Jesus. No, I talk about my faith that I don't know if it's gonna get better. Some of these guys been with me from when, when 2012 to now. My my faith was not really intact. I was hurt. I was wounded. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. But my faithfulness. Okay, my faithfulness. I don't know if God's gonna ever bring me out of this. But I kept showing up. Sometimes Dustin and I would show up and I ain't had nothing to preach. And the spirit would just take over. Sometimes God is looking at you to see, will you keep going on in spite of? It's not that he ain't going to bless you. Come on, y'all stay with me. It's not that he ain't going to bless you because you his child and he said that I will not hold no good thing from one of my kids. It's not that he won't bless you. It's just the fact God wants to know, will you keep moving even though it don't look good? How is, your, how, how is your determination built? Everybody can praise on the mountain. Can you praise them in the valley? Everybody can praise when the bills are paid. You got money in the bank. Yeah, woo! But can you praise when you only got 50 cent in the bank and you got a $28 bill? Come on now. Could y'all come with me? Come with me. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can praise God when it's all good. Anybody can praise God when you, all your kids got A's and B's. But can you praise God when them drunkards bringing in some F's? You, they saying that we're going to have to do this and your child is not doing that. And you, and you sitting there, can you still? Okay, y'all look at me like I'm per- Can you still? Come on. Can you, when Isaiah fell off the roof last June, it was this time last year that that boy fell off the roof, tore his ankle up. It didn't look good. I didn't know the boys were going to ever play again. You know, they told me, they told me he wasn't going to grow no more. That's what the doctor said. The doctor looked at me and do the Duke doctor, the top, looked at us and said, his growth plates look like they broke. He probably won't grow. I'm crying, my wife crying, he, he halfway crying, he, he, they have him on so much dope, he don't know what he's doing, you know. But, you know, me, you know, my wife's sleeping in the bathtub, I'm sleeping in the chair. This time, last year, this time last year, you know, we didn't know what it looked like. We were coming out of this and coming out of that, and you got that, and I don't know. Can we still praise God in spite of? He laid in the hospital. I come home to preach. Can you keep moving? That boy clocked in yesterday at almost 6'1". Brother, brother, when they did it, he clocked in almost 6'1", 260 pounds. And he's still growing. But they told me he wasn't going to grow no more. Now, I could have been like, man, forget this. Oh, Paul Peter for me. But sometimes, guys, the only thing you have is your praise. Sometimes the only thing you have is your hallelujah. Y'all better stop playing with me. Okay, maybe I'm just telling you, st- I'm not trying to be spooky, but there's been times that I had to throw bills on the table and just sing. And I can't sing, but I just had to go into a praise and worship. What else do I got? I don't got no money to pay the bill. So what am I going to do? I don't even know who to borrow nothing from. So the only thing I know to do is let's put these bills on the table, me, Rashida, and let you just lead us in some worship songs. What else? What are we going to do? Determination. Determination. And guess what? God brought, God brought us out, but he just wanted to see. Will you, are you going to run? Are you going to run back over there, or are you going to stand and fight? Are you going to throw in towels, or are you going to stand and fight? Come on, y'all better stop playing with me today. I feel good. Well, well, you know, I feel good. We're going to clean out the garage today, fellas. Where y'all at? Yeah, I, 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 that's how good I feel. But they going to clean out the garage. I'm a supervisor. It's Father's Day. 
You know, the determination to keep moving in spite of, man. What, what, what else you going to do? What else are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? What's really built in here? Determination. I wrote this down. Get mad and let anger fuel your change. Get mad and let anger fuel. What are you talking about? To get mad, that's what, hey amen. I got, we got mad at the Satan when that boy was laid up in that hospital. I got mad. What that, what, my, the, the anger that came with that wasn't the anger to be cussing or like that. It made me pray more. My prayer life went to a whole nother level. Why? Because that's how mad I got to say, I'm going to pray harder. I'm going to sow more. I'm going to fast more. I'm going to do more because that's all I got is in me. If you think this is going to stop me, devil, from praying and closing my Bibles, I'm going to do it harder. I'm going to do it more. Determination. Number four, dedication. Dedication. I put, in other words, commitment. Oh, here go that C word. This is the word that we don't like today. Commitment. Getting involved. Being sold out. That's why marriages are falling. That's why relationships are crumbling. Nobody want to be committed to nothing. Okay. And, it's, and, and the thing of it is, you don't even want to be committed to yourself. Come on. It's that, 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 that's dedication. 1 King 8.61. 1 King 8.61. Dedication. You have to be dedicated to something. Man, if you want to be a sinner, well, be dedicated to be the best sinner you can be. 1 King 8.61. And may you be completely faithful to the Lord our God. May you always obey his decrees and commands just as you are doing today. Dedication. Okay, y'all better stop playing with me. Dedication, 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 being dedicated. No matter what it looks like, no matter what you're going through, no matter the situation, I'm going to be dedicated to the things of God. I ain't going to lay out when I don't feel like it. I ain't going to witness to people. I'm not going to not pray to people. No. Pray for people. I'm going to be dedicated. One thing I can honestly say about me. Now, I'm not trying to toot my own horn or nothing like that. One thing I can honestly say about me is I have never in my life played church. Never. I ain't never played church. If I was going to put it this way, when I left church, I left church. I was a chief of sinners. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, ain't never, I ain't never played church. You know, I, 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 I ain't never done that. If I was going to be in the world sinning, I, oh, I sinned. You weren't going to catch me in the choir. Okay, y'all look at me like I'm crazy. You weren't going to catch me up there in the choir, uh, 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 up in the, um, in the men's chorus. Uh -uh. You going to sing today? Do it, you, you, now, you know where I was at. You know, good. No, I ain't getting up there. You know what I'm saying? But when I was in the church, I was in the church. What are you saying, Pastor? Be dedicated to whatever you're going to do. Don't play nothing. If you're going to be dedicated to raising your life to a higher standard, be dedicated with it. Learn to say no on some things. If you're going to live for God, live for God. If you're going to be sold out to his kingdom, be sold out to his kingdom. Be dedicated. Go with me to Proverbs 16 and 3. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans with what? Okay, it was like three people. Commit your what to the Lord? Come on. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans with what? That's what he's saying. Com dedication. Com commit your plans to the Lord. Commit your actions. Commit you. Commit your stuff to the Lord and you will succeed. The reason why you won't succeed is because you, you still not committed. You're still playing games. Come on now. You know, we're still doing all this stuff. People, no, God, there is nothing. If you are in Christ, I'm getting happy now, so I'm moving quick. If you are in Christ, there is no reason why you shouldn't be winning. You may have to go through some time, but there is no reason why you shouldn't be winning. Come on now. You got Katie and Steph Curry on your team. <laughs> Come on, you better stop playing with me. You got Katie and Steph Curry on your team. We can look at the finals. We can look, we can look, we can look at the finals. You had LeBron, they had LeBron, man. 
They had LeBron. Okay. They had LeBron. Best player in the world, they say. The problem with them losing wasn't LeBron. The problem was is that the people on his team didn't realize who they had. They didn't realize, and I'm not LeBron, I'm, my, my Warriors won, so, you know. But they didn't realize that they had LeBron on their team. So they should, so the, the boys that started with LeBron should have been knocking down and doing, but they weren't playing that, that, that hard. They weren't going for those little loose balls, you know what I'm saying? They trying to fight and all this stuff. Come on with me, y'all stay with me. You, who is on your team? Who is on your side? Come on now. If, the, if the God be for us, who can be against us? Yeah. yeah. If God be for you, who can be against you? Who do you have on your team? But you're going to have to be dedicated. Come on now. You asking him to help you succeed, you can't be sitting there while, the, while, while that ball going out of bounds and not hustle for it. Not going the extra mile to do this. You're going to have to put in some work, but you will succeed. you got the best player in the game on your team. But you got to be dedicated. Come on now. You're going to have to put in a little bit more time in the gym. That's what we was preaching to them boys up there at ECU. That's what the coach at ECU was preaching to them, all them guys that came out there. If you want to play on this level, you're going to have to be dedicated to it. That's Deacon Weather was telling them guys, and when you go to college and you start playing ball, you get in the gym, it ain't going to be, oh, I can't lift this much. No, you're going to lift it. Because we all going to be on this team together. And I don't got time for you quitting when the time get rough and we got to fight this thing out. I don't need, you better lift. I may help you lift, but you're going to lift it. There ain't no, I don't feel like going to practice today. Oh, no. Oh, no, you going to practice. Dedication, man. Dedication. Because truth of the matter is, guys, all of us in here don't feel like doing something. All of us in here, we don't feel like doing something. But we know it's that's when the biggest things happen is when you press through. Regardless. My last one, my last one, and I'm done. My last one, number five, is discipline. That's that D word, discipline. That, uh, I put down here the word is no. Say no. Discipline. It might, it might not be right. It might not be wrong, but it just might be wrong for you. Discipline. Hebrews 12 and 1. Hebrews 12 and 1. Discipline, guys. Discipline. If you, if you want to come out of debt, you got to have discipline not to be buying stuff. If you want to have a successful marriage, you're gonna have this. You're gonna have to have discipline. Come, y'all stay. Come on with me. If you want to have a successful business, you're gonna have to have discipline. We told them boys, if you want to go to this level up here, this D1 school stuff like that, you're gonna have to have discipline. You can't eat what everybody eat. You can't. Okay. You can't do what everybody do. That's one of the things. Uh, Deacon was with me. That's one of the things he talked about social media, wasn't he? He talked about Coach Ross said, he talked about that. He said, guys, the first thing I do is when they send me some good recruits to play ball for this college level, I go to your social media account. That's the number one thing I do. You got to be disciplined not to put stuff on there that you know ain't really, it might be funny, and it might not be bad to post on or post, but it might just be bad for you. It might get you kicked out. Discipline. To walk away from nonsense. Come on now. Discipline. Hebrews 12 and 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witness, witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with the doings, the race God has set before us. Throw off everything that's causing you not to move quick. Discipline. No, that ain't for me. I ain't going that route. Yeah, it might be more money, but that ain't all money ain't good money. I'm going to pass on that one. Learn to say no. Learn. Come on, come on now. Discipline. My next scripture, my next scripture. My last one, Proverbs 16 and 3. I'm sorry, Psalms 119, 9 through 11. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. 
I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. He said, I have hidden the words, your words in my heart. I have put them in my heart that I might not sin against who? You, God. I put them here. I'm dedicated. I'm disciplined. I've placed it here. I'm disciplined to say no when, I don't, when, when it's supposed to be no. I'm disciplined to be in church when I need to be in church. I'm disciplined to pray when I need to pray, to fast when I need to fast. I'm disciplined to, 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 to hold my mouth when my mouth don't need to be open. Amen. Boy, that's a lot of discipline. <laughs> discipline enough to not give you, my mom would say, the what for. When you deserve the what for. You deserve this what for, but not to give it to you. Discipline. Discipline to move. Discipline to obey God when he says something. You can stand to your feet, I'm done, God. Discipline. In our heart. Thank you for tuning in with us today. We pray that you were blessed by this message. You can find more information about our church on our website at breathofgodnc.org, Facebook at Breath of God Church, and or Instagram at B-O-G-N-C. If you are ever in the greater Fort Bragg or Fayetteville, North Carolina area, we would love for you to be our special guest at our 12.30 p.m. service on Sundays. We are located at 306 McCarthy. Arthur Road in Fayetteville, North Carolina. On behalf of Pastor Potts and the Breath of God Church family, thank you again for joining us and always remember to reach, love, and serve.